Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast, and I'm excited that you're here today because this is a very desired topic that I've had a lot of women ask me about is the four steps to set healthy boundaries and not just those cookie cutter steps that we've all seen on a blog somewhere. We get real deep as far as going through personal experiences to come up with these four steps. And that's why I'm very excited to introduce our guest speaker today, Alyssa. And Alyssa is a wife, a mother of three kids, but also works full-time and going to school for her master's and PhD. She also just graduated the Sculpt and Tone Accountability Program, where she had to focus on putting herself first, so she became in alignment so that she could allow herself to flow into her life and to her goals. She also is a very active member into the Booty Bands community. You'll find it at Booty Bands and Barbell's Women's Fitness Community. You can go ahead and let's get started in learning more about these four steps to setting healthy boundaries. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. You've been discovering boundaries and I thought what you wrote was really super inspirational as far as like what boundaries have been for you. And so I just wanted to ask a couple things as far as like what you wrote the other day, what came up for you? You wrote a text to me. What, what stems from that? I've been thinking a lot about healthy boundaries and, and how my life has come from one place to another. When we think of boundaries, there's so many different kinds. There's boundaries with friends. There's boundaries with family. There's boundaries with food. There's boundaries with self. It took me a long time to realize, to recognize those and set those lines. How my self-worth and, and how I feel about myself has really come through to help me realize like what kind of boundaries I need to set. Wow. That's so profound. And I can already hear the members that are listening. As soon as you said family or friends or like food or self, it's like immediately that relatability of the boundary setting and, and how we can all at some area in our life, totally understand what you just said. Yeah. So I'm going to read what you said, cause it was super profound. You said have now found your higher self and you've found the strength and setting these healthy boundaries finding those healthy boundaries has been such an amazing experience. I'm so strong now and every day I get stronger. So tell us about that. What's the strength that you're starting to see come from it? Because before I would be so depleted by unhealthy boundaries, by people, by everything. And because I I felt like I found my worth in that. And by focusing on myself and setting myself as a priority and, and seeing how worthy I am and how important I am, I, I'm able to like see that. When you feel worthy, what are some of the feelings or the actions that come from that? Like you're saying power, right? Because mm -hmm. deep down it's this underlying belief of I am worthy, which takes some work to get there. But once yeah. you get there, what happens next? I'm able to, in a way, put myself first and, and draw that line instead of having this blurred line of, of just giving, 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 and then trying to fill up that cup, that giving cup with just exogenous things, now I'm able to say, okay, I'm gonna do me first, and then I will do you. I will help you there. And it has been extremely empowering. And I actually feel like I can give more in this way. It's, it's just, it's been amazing. It really has. It's been amazing self-discovery. I have cold chills, as you said that, because I relate so much to that. And 
especially those that are listening, women naturally just go into this caregiver, nurturer route. That's fine. Those are okay. That's what we're meant to. Absolutely. Those are, those are sacred. However, the blurred line that you explained, which I'm so, I love that word that you said, the blurred line is that people pleaser part Mm -hmm. where we start to then put ourselves in the bottom. And I want to ask you a very real question right now being a people pleaser or finding your worth in putting other people first, do you ultimately get to that end joy and happiness or no? Oh, no, no. It's, it's a constant search. It's a constant reach. I felt so profound. I I like how you even said the constant reach. So I found that this is just metaphoric to everything else in life whether that's business or relationships or your health and fitness goals, if you're finding that something seems to be always out of reach, then there's something on an internal level that needs to be rewired. And once we find that rewiring, which ultimately is your truth, then are you starting to see a shift where, and what shift are you starting to see? (laughs) It's been a huge shift. Um, It's, it's been a shift from, feeling constantly depleted to, to feeling full instead of always being, always giving and being taken from that, that line, that boundary has, has cut that off. And so now I'm not just pouring myself out. I'm, I'm able to still keep part of myself and continue to be that nurturer, that supporter, but still keep me. The way that you articulate it, I just feel that everybody listening right now can just totally nod their head in agreement. Right, guys? Is doesn't she just articulate it so well? I love, I love how you express that because the words that you choose, it's like, oh yeah, absolutely. One of the common things I hear is that they don't know how to do the first step of a boundary. So what do you think the first step is? I think the first step is just recognizing that a boundary is not set. I mean, if if you don't have that line or if it's blurred, then you're not going to know. And so you have to recognize where you're lines are. Okay. Yep. I would agree with that hundred percent. The awareness of just where the blurred lines are. Love it. So then second step, what do you think the second step is? I think for me, the second step was I had to believe that I am enough and I am worthy of time and energy. And until I realized that I wasn't able to really set those lines, create those boundaries until that the first one and two, they, they go together. Well, great. And then what do you think number three is? So now that you've had the awareness that a boundary needs to be set, there's definitely a blurred line. Got it. Number two is now you're starting to, you believe that you're worthy. It's, it's important to feel that worthiness going into, okay, I'm worthy of setting this boundary. What do you think step number three is? Is actually setting the boundary. I mean, you you have to determine what it is that you're going to do and what you're going to accept and how much you're going to pour out. Got it. And to do that, I think that is, I like that you said this as step about step one, step two, step three, because oftentimes when people think of setting a boundary, instead of doing one and two, they automatically kind of jump to number three. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think that's where the boundaries can get really hard is because when they jump to number three, but then they don't feel worthy of it, then they kind of go backwards. Right. Right. So I think that your path that you have right here is just so profound in helping those listening of setting boundaries of really it is, you got to do number one, Mm -hmm. You can't do number three and then go, (laughs) you're Mm going to be bouncing around for a while. So number (laughs) one, 
awareness. Number two, really going to your truth of what you really know deep down that you are. You have to go back and rewrite those stories of those limiting beliefs. That's number two. Number three is really actually doing the action. So now that we're here and we're doing the action and you truly believe, okay, the awareness, you truly believe that deep down you're worthy. But number three, it's like actually saying that first sentence, what would be something helpful for maybe somebody that's listening? How did you do it? that wasn't maybe aggressive to the other person that put them defensive? Like, how are you able to find that, that harmony right there? You have to be tactful, <laughs> but you also have to believe that what you're saying is true. And that helps soften it a little bit. I think it's just been, okay, I understand that, that you have this going on. I've got to do this right now and I will get back to you when, you know, as soon as I can. And so I still validate their feelings, but I also make sure that they know, okay, Hey, I've got to do this for me. This is what I have to do right now. And I will come back to you. And it's worked. <laughs> Boom, boom, it's worked. Obviously, the defensive side doesn't work, right? We've tried that where it's been the opposite, where we just come at them and it's defensive mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. So I love that beautiful balance of just allowing them to be heard, right? Allowing them, mm -hmm. you're you're giving them a space of like, hey, this is where it's been. This is how it has been. I think number two is so important because when you come in a place of wholeness, then you have less of this effect of how they handle the boundary because mm -hmm. if they don't handle the boundary correctly step number two is really going to be hard if you don't have that place of like no i i'm whole and you and it's almost like you don't take things personal right like you understand like okay i'm whole coming from that place so step number three becomes a lot easier of i don't have to become intergrained in this mess of emotions it can just mm -hmm. be here's what it is, which is really beautiful of, of you explaining those three steps right now. Yeah. And in the past, when, when I didn't have that belief in myself, when I try to set those boundaries and they would come, you know, come back to me and then I'd be like, Oh, okay, well then. And, and I'd fall back into once again, a blurred line because I didn't believe that I was worth it. I, I felt like what was going on with them was more important than anything that was going on with me. That line became blurred again. I love what you said, because you can't do number three without number two. You just can't. You have to have your self-worth. You have to have your self-belief in order to effectively have those boundaries, I think. Oh, absolutely. And we can see it now, right? <laughs> now that we've been yeah. through it, we can see it now. Yeah. And it and it's hard, you guys. Number, number two can be hard on your own. If you're trying to like look in the mirror and do the affirmations and you're just trying to get to that place of your truth, it might be a little bit difficult. So I want you to know we're here for you. If you are struggling with that element of it, number two, let us know. Booty Bands and Barbells is here to really help you see your truth. Ultimately. And what's beautiful is we don't tell you your truth. You're the one that ultimately tells us your truth and we get to witness and observe it, which is the most amazing experience ever. But that is absolutely, absolutely key. Also found about affirmations, you guys, is that just the art of just saying it is not enough. That we have to actually believe it. Mm -hmm. We have to actually really believe it for actually to have the effects it needs to. And so what I do and I challenge for those that are listening is when you say your affirmations in the mirror, I want you to then start finding proof, find the confirmations of why you're enough or why you're worthy or why you're lovable. Find the proof because oftentimes we're looking for the opposite. We're looking for why we're not. And that creates the filter system. And that creates literally how we are, I guess, in a way, programming our minds. That's what we're really doing. Mm -hmm. And this really cool, fascinating part of our brain called the RTS or the reticular activating system is we get to choose how we're programming our mind and what we're focusing on. 
So if we want to focus on all the areas of we're not good enough, then we're going to prove it to ourselves. And then we're going to live our life that way. And it's going to be really hard to set boundaries, as you can see. My question for you then, Alyssa, is how have you been to not only say the words I'm worthy, but there's that confirmation and proof that you're living by too. Started off just with saying it. And then when I started looking at my life and all the things that I'm doing and all the things that have surrounded me and that I'm accomplishing, I'm just like, wow. When you focus on the good, it's like, wow. And so saying that over and over and looking at myself in the mirror and saying, okay, you, you are worth it, girl. You, you got this. It took six months. It wasn't overnight. I'm going to take work, but where you say it and the more you see it, it becomes ingrained in you. And it's so empowering. Like I just, I feel so powerful as just a woman, as a mother. It, it's just, it's been amazing. And you just, but you have to look around and see, okay, why, why is this true? And once you see that, it's just amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That was really beautiful. Is there a fourth step to setting boundaries or do you think it stops at number three then? I, I think the fourth step is, following through you have to maintain those boundaries can't just have it be temporary it has to be the same boundary all the way Mm. okay love that and what a mom you have to figure that one out pretty quick too with kids right (laughs) yes (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. I agree. I love that. Okay. So four steps on setting healthy boundaries. You guys heard it. And you know, what's so cool is it wasn't pre-scripted. It was so authentic and genuine how that naturally came about. And that was so pure. Oh, love Mm -hmm. that. Okay. So if he's listening right now and they are just in their own way, just imagine yourself as kind of your old self, just kind of really stuck and and trying to reach the goals, but it just seems to be further and further out. What is something that you could tell someone right now that's listening to just give them that bit of hope that there's some, something different out there? You have to look inward, think about, or see what it is that is hopeless for you because There is always hope. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. And you just have to look in the right place. First place to look is inward. You've got to look inside and see, okay, who am I? What am I doing? And why am I doing it? And if you can answer those questions, then you can start coming out of that hole. I love it. So if somebody was wanting to follow you or find more about you? Do you have any, anything out there like um, as far as business related or a book or anything like this that people can follow you with? No, no, I don't. Okay, cool. Well, I think you should write a book by the way. Oh, oh my goodness. It would probably be several books. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, once you do, we're going to go ahead and put it in here so you guys can all hear her book. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time today and just sharing your words of wisdom. That was really cool to find the four steps of getting those healthy boundaries. How cool is that? That people are trying so hard, but they're skipping the steps. And Mm -hmm. how cool is it to kind of have that breakdown for them? So thank you for sharing that words of wisdom today. And that's it. We'll appreciate your time today. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye, hon. Bye. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbell. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. To have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable as they commit to our goals.
to beauty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I have to be real with you. The past six months really took a toll on me and my body. I felt incredibly stressed, isolated, after being a good 12 to 13 pounds heavier, said that's it, I'm gonna make healthy choices. And I'm happy to tell you today that I am actually down 15 pounds. I feel amazing. I feel like I lost fat and put on muscle. I have a lot more energy. So it's never too late to start. You can take control again. Thanks, Booty Band Nation. Positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are, or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.